This video starts with a message. Dear Clive, have a USB PSU and a disappointing USB cable. Here's a USB PSU. Here is the very disappointing USB cable. Um, and some Belgian honey sweets. Good for hay fever and sweet tooth. Regards, Chris. Now, the sweets... Uh, I'll open one of these up. Uh, I'll see. It says Hop Jazz. I'm not even sure how that's pronounced. Hop Jazz. And the back it says uh, Treffen Belgium. www.treffen, T-R-E-F-I-N, dot com. And if you look at the sweets inside... They look initially like a sort of chewy toffee, but they're actually really hard. They're like a butterscotch and quite crunchy, and they've got a very deep honey taste. They're actually very nice. I shall be eating these after having eaten all the other ones already. The power supply in question is a pound land, well, a two, two pound land power supply that is smelling dark, shall we say. And it's not because some, it's not a bad design. Uh, it's because uh, Chris accidentally, when he went to bed, threw some clothing into the corner. It landed across this power supply and it grossly overheated. And this is a common problem. It happens with Apple power supplies. I say Apple power supplies. I just use them as what people will think is the pinnacle of excellence in technology when it's not really... But um, if you cover any power supply with furnishings, and a lot of people have this issue when they use an extension lead and they're charging their phone, and they've got it in the quilt or duvet on their bed and it covers it over, the risk of it going far is huge. Uh, really, it will get very hot. So let's open it up and take a look and see what's happening here. Actually, before we do that, let's test it. So it smells, by the way. If I take one of that, a new one, no smell. If I smell this one, it smells like dark circuit board. If you know what I mean, that smell of burnt circuit board that suggests something's got very, very hot. So I'll plug it in. Let's bring down uh, a little load unit. Let's bring down this tester and plug this in. Set this down to zero. Plug it in. It's seeing five volts. Uh, let's zoom down this to get closer into the action. Here we go. Five volts at zero amps. Let's turn this up. 190, 490, so this is rated typically about, if I recall correctly, this went up to about 2 amps before it started lowering. So it's still holding 5.2 volts, uh, 2 amps, 2.18 amps, that's pretty good, 5.2, and then it suddenly cuts down at about 2 point, just short of 2.3 amps. So this thing is still working, it's, it's still working fine, it's just got that slight issue that it has overheated because it was covered with soft furnishings. Let's open it up. Talking of the hay fever, where's my spudger here? The only time I've ever experienced the symptoms of hay fever was while I was working on a television production, or was it a film? Not sure. I think it was a television production in Glasgow. And the place we were filming had lots of real long grass and all the crew experienced a hay fever symptoms from it. It was just basically at that season that the grass was just shedding its pollen. And uh, although I don't suffer hay fever normally, uh, I did in that instance. Oh, I seem to recall this is quite a hard type power supply to open. It's well fastened shut. Oh, well. Let's spudger it anyway. I was doing uh, special effects in that. I was doing uh, water effects. It was uh, with a company called Hands On Effects in Glasgow. And we were hosing the place down because the theme of it was that it was very wet. And unfortunately, the filming in that production stopped abruptly when a druggie turned up and uh, went right into shot and refused to leave unless he was paid money. Um, police were called. We decided we'd got all the shots we needed, which was someone getting splashed by a vehicle driving through uh, a puddle at the side of the road and the bus that the person was going to get on with the, all the rain and the rain bars, so it looked like it was pissing with rain. Uh, we decided, screw it, called the police, uh, and then just decided, screw it, we'll just, uh, that's, what, all, we've got all we need from that shot, so we'll just move on. Lovely. So, uh, opening this up. I, to be honest, it doesn't show any signs of heat at the moment. Let's take a look at the other side. How was this fastened in before? Was it glued in? I don't think it's screwed in. I think it was stuck in with something. I'm not really sure. I can't remember how these are. Oh, you know what? It's this glue, isn't it? 
it's tacked in with this uh, silicon type glue at the back. It will come out. You know what? Ah, look at that. The circuit board has burnt. Round about the diode. The diode. Now, if you recall, when I took a look at this uh, design before, I was concerned about the fact the diode is getting very hot. And in this instance, because it's not been able to dissipate the heat, because it's been covered and has been the high load, it has got very hot. And that capacitor ain't happy either. It's domed slightly at the end. I don't know if that's doming is due to pressure buildup inside or just general. That's how it was out the factory. I don't think so. It looks as though it's suffered heat stress. That's disappointing. Keep in mind that one lead of that is connected directly to that diode. That's the one weakness in this. Uh, if you run it at full current, that diode does get very hot. Mm. So that's what's happened there. It's not really dramatic, but uh, it's the moral of the story is here. If you've got electronic power supplies, do not, well, any power supply, do not cover it with furnishings. Always make sure, if you've got an extension, that no furnishings can go over the top of it because they do thermal insulate it and these things do need to dissipate heat. It also makes me wonder, why don't they put ventilation holes in these things? They do in compact fluorescent lamps. And the reason I'm guessing is that if something goes bang inside, the uh, the plasma could come out through the holes. And the when something goes bang and you get the flash and the plasma comes out, it does conduct heat on for, uh, it does conduct well, it does conduct heat. It conducts electricity. I have had an incident in the past when I plugged in a power supply, a cheapo power supply from China, and it went bang in my hands and it left the, out, the actual imprint of the seam was left as a sooty sort of ring on my hand where I'd been holding it. Kind of funny, really. But it makes me think, you know, these things would benefit greatly from ventilation holes, but why don't they do that? Is it in case kiddies poke things through the holes? Or is it in case, you know, when, if something blows up, this flash comes out? I'm guessing it's this mummy culture that, you know, it's in case babies poke pins through the holes or something like that. I don't really know. But they would benefit greatly. It would be less of a fire or overheating risk if, you know, power supplies were allowed to have vents to let the heat, to let air flow through them. But that's what's happened in this case. That's uh, interesting the way it's done that. It's not super dramatic, but uh, it does show that covering it does uh, pose that risk. Now, let's take a look at this. If I plug this into a USB power supply, it's supposed to light up. And you're probably not seeing this. It is. It's one of these fibre optic ones that's got the uh, little notches and it's got little dots all the way along it. And it is lighting up. I'm not sure if you're even going to see this. No, you're not going to see anything because it's so dull. But it does, at roughly 25mm, one inch spacing, it's got little dots all the way along. <clears throat> and initially I plugged it in and I thought, oh, it's ultraviolet, because it's a very pallid blue. And it, it's not. If I plug in, if I plug this fairly accurate uh, USB power monitor into the power supply, the portapow, and then I plug the load into the output, and let's get uh, let's uh, get close into this. It shows that the device, the lead, is drawing about thirty six milliamps. Uh, that's to power the LED. I know in advance that this is going to be one of those little three millimeter LEDs, and it's probably been absolutely grilled by being run at thirty six milliamps. And when you've got a white LED. Uh, a cheapo white LED in particular, they degrade very quickly if you overrun them. The intensity drops very fast. I'm guessing, I could be wrong here, I'm guessing that this started off at full intensity but rapidly degenerated in intensity. So let's open it up and take a look inside. I'm not sure if this is going to spudge open. The company I was doing the special effects with there, the hosing down, was hands-on effects in Glasgow. Owned by Perry Costello, MD who works in the television and film industry in Glasgow, will know hands-on effects. He's a bit of a character, in a good way. I like Perry. Bit of a crackpot, but that's okay. That's uh, what makes the best, uh, best characters in the entertainment industry. So uh, here we have the LED. And it's stuffed down the end of a bit of heat shrink. Let's plug this in again. Oh, yes, I can plug it in again.
and the LED is just... Oh, hold on. I'm going to pull the heat shrink off this. Yeah, that is not 40 milliamps worth. This LED has degraded so badly. And there'll be a resistor on the board here. What value is the resistor? Let's get uh, the magnifying device into it. 510, it's a 51 ohm resistor. 51 and uh, 0 is a multiplier. So 51 ohm resistor in series an LED. It's overdriven LED. Typically, uh, an LED would be rated 20 milliamps. With one of these LEDs, I would say 10 milliamps would be better. But in these leads, to get the intensity for the fiber optic bundle, they really ram the current through these LEDs to get the brightness up. And the result is that uh, if you've got one of these leads, you may notice the intensity falls off quite quickly in some of the colors, uh, particularly the white one where the phosphor degrades. And it looks like that. That's why it's gone that pallid blue color. It's possibly damaged the phosphors as well as the chip. And that's what's made it go uh, sort of very washed out looking. So the answer here is that technically speaking, I could change this LED and uh, reincarnate that. The temptation is to do that now, but do I have many three millimeter LEDs? I'm not sure. One moment, please. I'm just going to check. Oh dear. Well, the only LEDs that I could conveniently find in three millimeters, it's not a size I use a lot because I don't like the fact that the resin package is so small that it doesn't give much support to the leads. I prefer 5mm LEDs. But uh, the ones I found were Chai Wing Aqua, CW Aqua, and anybody who was in the early days of buying LEDs on eBay uh, will remember Best Hong Kong and Chai Wing as being, shall we say, prominent suppliers of LEDs. And uh, they were shit. They were really crap. It was basically dumpster dive LEDs. They they did the job. They were good. I used them in props and you just, I got used to the fact I just built in plenty so that if they failed, uh, it, you know, wasn't such a big issue. I've just suddenly realized I've got another LED I could use here. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Chai Wing LEDs were crap. And the best Hong Kong LEDs were crap. They really, if you put 100 in a panel, some of them would start flickering going out straight away, first of all. And that was a bad experience at the time when you weren't, when bad LEDs didn't exist. Now, I've suddenly realised I've got these. I've got these candle LEDs that flicker. Oh, that's quite appealing. Should I use a flickering LED? Well, tell you what, since I, I've already dug out the Chai Wing LED, let's stick it into the LED tester and I'll show you the colour. It's quite nice. It's a... Uh, uh, what they call aqua, it looks green actually in the camera, but in reality, it's a bluey green. Um, and depending on the amount of current you put through it, it goes from being a soft green up to, let's whack some high current through it. Let's put some current through that would have been what it would have gotten the, uh, if it had been used in uh, this little thing which pumps a lot of current through it. And it's, uh, it's not showing up much dis different. It, it, it is a bluish green. It's, it's quite a nice colour. Tur not quite turquoise, but but close. You can get turquoise LEDs, quite nice. <laughs> uh, the little rubber cap here, I thought this was heat shrink, but it's a dedicated cap. That's quite interesting. Uh, another thing that's interesting is the original white LED. Let's just sew the leads off this. The original white LED uh, has the anvil inside, the reflector that holds the chip. It's got it connected to the positive, which is unusual for LEDs. So let's uh, tin these leads. Fortunately, I do have a piece of solder handy here. Let's uh, tin the leads. And uh, crop the leads on this. Where, where are my snips? There they are. I used these to cut something really, really blunt and hard recently, and it's taken the edge off them. This is why cheap snips are a good idea. Well, let's, uh, before I do this, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's try to remember which lead is which when I cut this so I remember the polarity. The flickering LEDs might not be so happy. These snips are ruined now. I have completely ruined these by cutting something blunt. That's what happens when you're clumsy and too lazy to go and get the proper cutting tool when it comes to crunch. So let's uh, tin these leads. And solder the white lead here. Hopefully it won't pop off. Solder it onto the positive connection, which is that one. Very, very fumbly. So 
So let's uh, solder it onto this in the same style it was soldered on by the original manufacturer, which was shoddily. And let's get the other lead on, and then I'll try it out before I do anything else. The other advantage of using the flashing, the flickering LED, is it probably will deal with the... It's got a certain element of resistance in it. It has a voltage drop that it will deal better with the... It won't be driven so hard, driving the chip so hard because of... Uh, it's not just a bare LED and resistor. Let's uh, plug this in and see what happens. It's bright. Oh, I wonder what the current is. That would be interesting, although it's going to be quite hard to tell because it's going to be bouncing up and down a bit. It's a horrible colour. These were supposed to be warm white flickering LEDs. I think puce yellow is a better description. This is what happens uh, when you buy random bags of LEDs off eBay. So the average current is about 15, 20 milliamps. That's absolutely perfect. Rightio. So now, let's uh, turn this off. Let's turn the soldering station off so it doesn't buzz and click in the background. Uh, I shall shove the little rubber boot over this. I shall shove it over the end of the fiber optic. Where is the fiber optic? There it is. And then I shall plug it in. I won't bother trying to put the case on, that's going to be very fumbly. And then that's already looking quite good. You won't be able to see this yet, but I'm going to take the exposure off here. I'm going to turn the light off. Ah, uh, yes. Much better, although I will say it's still fading out a lot to the end. It's still visible at the end, but it's not mega bright. But it's much better than it was before, and it's running at more reasonable current, and it makes look, it look like the lead's malfunctioning by flickering like that, which is pleasing in its own right. A shimmering, flickering lead. They look strangely yellowish for the warm white. That's kind of odd. Uh, but there you go. Uh, so the power supply... Definitely uh, don't make sure you don't cover the power supplies in soft furnishings. They do overheat. It, at the very least, it will cause them to overheat. They'll still remain working. But uh, if they don't do anything dramatic like blow up, then you have to keep in mind that if you overheat these power supplies, it's shortening their lifespan greatly. That capacitor has suffered. The diode has suffered. If the diode overheats completely, it may go short circuit and then the power supply will just stop working. Uh, so if you want to make these last as long as possible, try and mount your power supplies somewhere cool and keep them well clear of clutter so there's always air ventilation around them. It's always a good thing. And uh, yes, flickery leads too.